Okay. We've got this Axman Anderson out here in the garage running again. Fired it up last week on peak hole. Been playing with the settings some. Right now I have uh, this is the boiler temperature controller and this is the ashing controller. As you can see, this is the boiler is set for to run at 155 degrees. The ashing is set for 140. It just started up for heat call. We're running a very low fan speed. I mean, it's not really heating anything right now, so we have a 3-inch pulley on the motor and a 4-inch pulley on the, the fan, which gives us, um, I think, somewhere around 1,300 RPMs, a little less than 1,300. And for the auger, we have a 2.5-inch pulley on the motor and a 5 5 yeah, five inch pulley on the uh, gearbox. So I guess I have to calculate what that means. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's actually been running pretty problem free out here like this. So I haven't really messed with it much. I mean, the only thing it's got going is this radiator here, which I mean, right now it's like 70 degrees outside, so so it, it just sits there for the most part and doesn't do anything. It just keeps itself warm. The cat's wondering about what all this racket is now, right? Cat. She says, well, at least there's a boiler running in the garage. I like that. I just cleaned off the uh, fire view door. And you can see it's, it's just, just starting to light right now. So we'll come back in a few minutes and um, have a look at it while it's uh, really blazing away. Okay, so it's pretty well lit now. Get a couple of these lights up so we can see the fire a little better. That should be good. Burning black rocks. Sorry, my my fire view door is starting to get. Uh, beyond being able to scrape it with a razor to get it clean. I guess it's getting etched. But that's what it looks like when it's running. And if this is very mild because this is uh, it's a very small heat load it's heating right now which is really nothing. So the fan speed I have set way down low. And it, it's, so far this week it's just been sitting here running like this. And, you know, it gets a little chill in its boiler and it, it fires up and just runs for a while. See, the, it's ashing right now, so you, that will just cold falling out of the feed tube, that piece of, that tube there, the fire is all around, it is the feed tube, cold falls out of there on, onto the fire. fire again. We'll look at the other end. That's the fan motor. This is the 
fan pulley. This is a fan bearing box. And behind this black fan plate here is the fan, which is actually inside the fire, inside the swirl chamber. This is my separate auger motor that I put on here with its own switch. And it's driving the auger gearbox here. And this chain comes out of the back of the gearbox and turns the auger. This, this is a cam load that's actually on the auger tube. What it does is it pushes this bearing, which pushes this lever, and pushes this gear. So the shaft on this gear is attached to an eccentric that pulls the grate that sits on the fire back and forth. And this here is the action solenoid that you hear people talking about. So that actually activates and basically if it's not activated, hopefully it come around again here, this will stay like that. And then the ashing lever will just park right there and the cam can no longer activate it. And this is the, the transfer head here. This is the, the top of the auger. So if we take this off, turn this light back on. You'll see the coal waiting to fall into the fire. My 75 years of Axman Anderson sticker that I got. The last bunch of parts I got. They've been in business since 1944 building these things. <laughs> and they still build them in South Williamsport, PA. Okay, let's put this down for a second. See the uh, that's that's the auger. The auger's hollow. And you can see right down into the bin with the light that's right. Wonderful. Let's see. Yeah. That's how the coal gets into the feed tube. cover back on before we make too much of a mess. There we go. Drop the flashlight. Back that up. So as you can see, that feed tube. Well, maybe you can't see it that well, so I'll try to describe it. This feed tube here at the top of the auger where the transfer head is leads right into the fire and that's actually what you see get in the camera shot here right right there so that's the, the one edge of it kind of hard to see in there but that is the end of the feed tube and it just gravity falls in there the auger doesn't drive it in or anything the auger is hollow so what happens is Once the coal gets to the top, it can either fall in to the feed tube, to the fire, or basically, it, if, the, if this gets really full, kind of like it is now, it's just going to push coal back down the hollow center of the auger. And that's basically how one of these things works. It's pretty crazy, but it works pretty good.
one was here. It was built in 1959. 130,000 BTUs per one hour. Made by Axman Anderson. Max water pressure is 30. Max steam pressure is 15. And that's it. Axman Anderson, 130M.